All right, we're very excited to be continuing the second annual tournament of college athletics trivia presented by the Scott and Holman podcast. We've got our second semifinal here. Had a really exciting first semifinal match, so we're going to figure out who is our second contestant to move on to the finals. And uh, Sam, I know we, we talked a lot about having competitive and non-competitive first rounds. And the guy, the two guys you've got here, Clayton and Cliff, I don't think either of them hardly missed more than maybe one or two questions and ended up just running away in the first round. So I'm really curious to see how this one goes. Yeah, I, I have no read on it. I think both of these guys could be in the championship here pretty shortly. All right. So player one has been uh, randomly selected is Clip. Uh, you may remember him uh, from Pirate Radio from his dominant win in the first round. Clip, how are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling good, but I watched uh, Clayton's previous game and heard what you guys said about him. And uh, it, it should be a challenge tonight. It should be fun. Should be, oh, it's uh, all hype. <laughs> Clayton player two back for more uh, how you feeling heading into this uh, semifinal fantastic thanks for having me and uh, it's an honor playing as esteemed an opponent as Cliff uh, I got very lucky last time and looking forward to a fun evening all right so we're going to go ahead and jump right into it by now you probably know how it goes it's going to be real simple you get a point for each correct answer no points for incorrect guesses uh, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into it Cliff as we mentioned is player one so he gets first choice of our first round categories which are Empty Trophy Cases Football Edition, In Father's Footsteps, The Road to Oklahoma City, and Putting Down Roots. Clip, where do you want to go? Let's go In Father's Footsteps. In Father's Footsteps. All right, here is your first clue. Both of this legendary NFL defensive lineman's sons went on to follow in their father's footsteps and get drafted in the first round out of the universities of Virginia and Oregon, respectively. Howie Long. Howie Long is correct, Clip, with the correct answer. Let's get us started here. All right, number two in Father's Footsteps. While neither ended up living up to their father's legendary reputation, Marcus and Jeffrey Jordan both played Division I basketball and finished their careers in the early 2010s at this school that at the time was a Conference USA member. Well, I saw uh, one of them in Menjis, and he had the most accessories on I'd ever seen. He had, like, <laughs> two arm sleeves, a headband, goggles. I'm going to go with UCF. UCF Central Florida is correct. Well done, Clip. Final clue in the category in Father's Footsteps. This basketball player, who was a member of UNLV's 1990 National Championship team and played for over a decade in the NBA, saw his son become a pr premier NBA prospect this past year playing in the ACC. Greg Anthony. Greg Anthony is correct. His son, Cole Anthony, a big uh, hyped up pick out of North Carolina. So well done. Clip sweeps the in the father's footsteps category. Uh, would have expected nothing less to get us started on this matchup here. And Clayton, you've got control. Your options are empty trophy cases, football edition, the road to Oklahoma City, and putting down roots. Can I have empty trophy uh, cases, please? You sure can. And your first question here, this Big 12 schools football conference title draft. Sorry, I should have mentioned, if you haven't already seen our empty trophy cases edition, this is about schools that have never won their current conference uh, title in football. Uh, so this Big 12 schools football conference title drought dates back to the year 1912 when they were members of the Missouri Valley Intercollegiate Athletic Association. Okay, 12. Got two in mind. Um, um, I'm going to say Iowa State. Iowa State is correct. When in doubt, we're probably making Dustin sad by pointing out how bad Iowa State is at sports. I was deciding between them and Kansas, and Kansas had Gale Sayers, so I figured they may have won a conference at some point. I think, I think Mangino, maybe they might have won in the one in the. Oh, Mangino of course, yes, and Baby Mangino. Remember the little kid for Halloween? Yes, <laughs> dressed up as Mangino the one year. All right, number two in empty trophy cases. Name either of the two schools to join the SEC in 1991. They're both the correct answer, having both failed to win a conference title in the intervening three decades. Arkansas. Arkansas is correct. you know the other one? Uh, nine, who joined the SEC in 91? Uh, South Carolina? South Carolina is correct. Well done. Didn't need both of them. Had both of them in there. Uh, final question in uh, empty trophy cases. Were they cases. independent before that, or were they part yes. of the conference? Yeah, independent. They, were, they were independent, yeah. Okay. All right, finally, despite being an FBS member since 1994, this Sunbelt school has not won an outright conference title and has only one winning season. Okay, FBS versus then, okay, I think Sunbelt, Sunbelt. Uh, yes. um, one since 94. Um, is it Arkansas State? It is not Arkansas State. Cliff, you have a guess here? 
Honestly, that's like the first school I thought about, but I think they're good. So yeah, so I think they have a few titles. Um, Fun Bells, Louisiana Monroe. Louisiana Monroe is correct. That's well, nice pull. Yeah. pulls that one. I was I, I wrote that question. I was really worried that like even for a hard question, I was like, is this is this still too difficult? Yeah, so. Well, Lafayette's good, right? But Monroe, yeah. Lafayette's had some good yeah. teams. They're in the New Orleans Bowl every single year. <laughs> yeah, they beat uh they beat ECU one year in that bowl. <laughs> of course, they, half the schools in FBS have lost the New Orleans Bowl to Louisiana Lafayette. All right, but uh, Cliff, it's back to you. You're up four to two. Your remaining categories are the road to Oklahoma City and putting down roots. The road to Oklahoma City. The road to Oklahoma City. This clue, uh, this category, I should say, is about the three most prolific softball programs in history. So if you know who those three are, lucky for you, uh, just name them in order, and you'll uh, you'll suit this category. Uh, here's your first clue. Not only does this California school have the most total women's college World Series titles with 12, but they are the current defending champions after winning it all in 2019. I'll say UCLA. UCLA is correct. Well done. There we go. Second clue in the road to Oklahoma City. They may be second fiddle to the Bruins within their own conference, but this school has won eight national titles and counts Team USA legend Jenny Finch among its alumni. I believe uh, Arizona. Arizona is correct. Well done. And move final clue in the road to Oklahoma City. Current Houston Cougar softball head coach, go Cougs, Kristen Vesley is actually the program record holder for career base hits while playing for this four-time national champion Big 12 power. Hmm. Let's go Oklahoma. Oklahoma is correct. Clip, well done Oops. knowing or at least being able to infer the uh, softball powers there. Uh, finally, uh, Clayton, the last category in the first round is belongs to you, and that is putting down roots. Here's your first clue. Mm -hmm. This coach put down almost three decades worth of roots at Virginia Tech, but I think the thing that we'll all best remember him for is that image of him celebrating going to overtime with Wake Forest, tied 0-0. Beamer? Frank Beamer is correct. Well done. All right, your second clue in putting down roots. Well known for his time in the NFL and for the national championship he won at the University of Miami, Howard Schnellenberger's longest stop at any one job was actually when he spent the last 11 years of his career at this school. Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic is correct. And final clue in putting down roots. By the time this men's hoops coach retired in 2005, he had put down roots at both Illinois and New Mexico State so deep that he was both schools' all-time winningest coach. Uh, Kruger? Kruger is incorrect. Club, do you know this one? Um, Illinois. Lou, um, is it Lou Henson? I don't know. Lou Henson is correct. Well done. Nicely done. Nicely Pulled that one done. out of the ether. So uh, well done, Clip. Uh, all 12 categories answered correctly by someone in the first round. Clip has got an 8-4 to four lead. Still lots of time to go. Um, so Clayton has first choice in the second round, which is going to be hosted uh, by my co-host Sam here. Well, if I took credit for that, that would be like saying Daddy and I killed the bear with the way the score <laughs> is right now. If it was like 10-2 to two or 11-1 to one maybe. But, yeah, still, still anyone's game. So as you can see, we have 1-1. One, one. 2-2, two, two, where's that bowl, and 20th Century Conference realignment. Uh, where's that bowl, please? Sun Bowl. El Paso. Paso is correct. The Independence Bowl. Okay, which one is that? Uh, okay, I mixed that in the Liberty Bowl up. Um, is it Mobile, Alabama? Mobile, Alabama is incorrect. Clip. Shreveport? Shreveport is correct. Holiday Bowl. San Diego. San Diego is correct. All right, Cliff, you've got a 9-6 to six lead, and you have control of the board. 1-1. Uh, one, one. All right, this category is about first overall uh, draft picks. The Chicago-born three-time All-NBA defensive team member was the first overall pick in the 2012 draft out of Kentucky. 2012, um, is it Anthony Davis? Anthony Davis is correct. 
this dinosaur-loving defensive end from Texas A&M, went 1-1 in the 2017 NFL Draft. Miles Garrett? Miles Garrett is correct. With the fir first ever pick in the first ever WNBA draft, the Houston Comets took Tina Thompson from this school. Tina Thompson. Tina Thompson. Didn't you have a Cheryl Swoops question or something? I knew she went where she went. Um, Tina Thompson. She didn't go to UConn, I don't think. Um, or maybe she did. I don't know. Not Tennessee. Tina Thompson from um, – let's say USC. Continues to just pull – USC is correct. Right uh, I'm sorry it's for that, the delay right? there. I was, I was kind of – was, was, wow. uh, was, was All right. Great, so great pull there in the hard question. I know Lou Henson and, I like, Louisiana Monroe, that was a good guess. That one was complete just – but <laughs> didn't Dustin, didn't Cheryl Miller play for uh, USC yeah. too? Yeah, we had Cheryl. So, you know, women's basketball power, not a bad guess for 1990s women's basketball power. All right, Clayton, so you have 2-2 two -two and 20th century conference realignment to choose from. I'll go with conference realignment, please. This Atlantic Coast – sorry, the Atlantic Coast Conference made a splashy addition in 1991 when it added which school? Florida State. Florida State is – Correct. Excuse me. Sorry. The Pac-8 became the Pac-10 in 1978 when it added which two schools? Arizona and Arizona State. Those are correct. Two founding members of the SEC left in the 1960s and still play FBS football today. Name one of them. Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech is correct. Just for grins, can you name the other one? Uh... Who, uh... Who would have left in the 60s? Okay. Was it like Swanee or something? Consider it a, a current FBS member, so. Okay, I guess. I I guess well, they have a very good literature program. Um, <laughs> FBS literature. <laughs> I know Tulane um, was there at one point. Yeah. Oh. There you got it. There it is, Tulane. Yep. Is that it? Yep. yep. All right, so Clayton, keeping the heat on, 12-9 to 9 clip. You have the lead. You also have control of the final uh, category in the second round here, and it's 2-2. Two, two. This hooper glided all over the court wearing number 22 as a Houston Cougar before he wore number 22 as a Houston Rocket. Clyde Drexler. Clyde Drexler is correct. Before taking number 22 to the Hall of Fame as a Dallas Cowboy, Emmett Smith wore number 22 in college at this school. Florida. Florida is correct. Dying to get you a Cowboys question, this I know. Uh, C.J. Anderson took number 22 to the Pro Bowl as a member of the Denver Broncos, but he wore number nine in college at this Pac-10 school. Cal? Cal is correct. Whoa. Good old Cal Berserkly, to steal my co-host's uh, favorite nickname of them. A very uh, deserved nickname for that city. So, Clip uh, didn't miss many questions there. It takes a 15-9 to nine lead into the final category, but as always, the third round often – throws this one out of whack. So Clayton, very, still, very much still in it. Uh, your category today is, says Ty Detmer is the only 20th century quarterback among the top 15 leaders in career FBS passing yards. Name the 14 from this century. So you guys, as always, going to alternate Clayton and Clip and Clayton and Clip giving answers. As long as you keep giving correct answers, you get to stay in it and keep um, accumulating points. As soon as you give a wrong answer, you are out. Clayton, since you are trailing, you get to go first here. So whenever you're ready, name who you believe are one of the top uh, 15 leaders in career FBS passing yards and played in the 21st century. Graham Harrell. Graham Harrell is correct. And we'll pop his name up on the board here real quick. There he is. All right, and clip it's to you. <laughs> um, oh, boy. Okay. So, I'm really nervous now that he's going to come back, and I'm going to miss this. Um, no pressure. I, I'm going to – no. Um, all right, hold on. I don't want to say the ECU guy. I don't know if he's top whatever. 
Oh, I could say a Houston guy. Um, uh, Case Keenum, is he up there? Case Keenum is uh, – I will fill pop up here. He is number one on the list. So, yes, he, oh, uh, sweet. he definitely qualifies. I was going to thank ECU, but, I, hey, go Houston, right? <laughs> All right, uh, Clayton, it's back to you. Is the Chang guy from Hawaii up there? Uh, Timmy Chang from Hawaii is up there. I couldn't think it was Timmy or Tommy, and I didn't want to screw it up. <laughs> we'll, we'll <give laughs> I thought it was Jeopardy Tommy. Rules. We'll give you Jeopardy rules and let you have just the last name. We'll take that. Okay, sounds good. Um, so FBS passing yards. There's so many like transfer quarterbacks now. Who didn't? Who stayed and played all those years? Um. Did Deshaun Watson play enough? Deshaun Watson did not play enough, so he did not make it onto the list. So, Clayton, you uh -oh. your door open here. You're going to need to rattle off at least five answers in a row for a tie. Six okay. to win. Uh, so, Clayton, you, here you, you have it in front of you. Let's see if you can do it. Okay. Sam Bradford. Uh, Sam Bradford nope. is – Incorrect, actually, and you're not going to lose. When actually, when we were going, when we were doing this, running this before, that was the answer that I gave that uh, that cut me off on the list. So Sam Bradford not in the top 14, unfortunately. So that is going to wow. give the game for congratulations. Clark. We'll go ahead and run down the list here. We've got Landry Jones. Uh, Shane Carden's not up there, is he? What's that? Shane Carden. Shane Carden, no. Carden is not up there. No, we've got uh, Baker Mayfield was the, the transfer quarterback that did make it. Uh, Luke, Another Lincoln Riley coach guy. Luke Falk of uh, Washington State. Uh, Colt Brennan uh, of Hawaii, uh, Rakeem Cato from Marshall. Wow, wow. Mason, Mason Rudolph from uh, Oklahoma State, uh, Sean Mannion from Oregon State, uh, Brett Rippon also of Boise, Philip Rivers, uh, NC State at the beginning of the century, and finally Corey Robinson of Troy to round out the list. So, uh, very competitive game. Uh, congratulations to uh, Clip. Is the the first time contestant is uh, marching on to the uh, the finals. Congratulations. Thanks, and uh, Clayton nailed just about all of his. So I'm, I'm, I got lucky enough to get stuff I knew and stuff I could guess at. So awesome.